judgment is upon you. Guilty. You stand condemned. Your penance is due. Guilty. Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome to my complete Sino guide. In today's video, we're going to be talking about the newest five star character in Genshin Impact, Sino, who's one of the most hyped up characters, and at least for me, someone who I've been waiting for for so long, so I can't wait to talk to you about him. In this video, what we're going to be doing is covering everything you need to know about this character, covering the best ways to build him, both artifact wise and weapon wise, as well as optimal playstyle, combos, teams, and a full C0 showcase at the end. Before we begin, I want you guys to know that I've been using Sino a lot on the media server before he came out, so I got to try out his optimal combos and builds to give you guys the most accurate information in. In this video. With that said, if there's anything new I want to add, it will be in a pinned comment. And as always, I do stream most nights on Twitch. Link in the description if you're interested in watching me live. And with that being said, let's get into it. All right, so the first thing we're going to do in this video is cover Sino's abilities and playstyle, break down his kit, and give you guys the most efficient ways of playing him. The first thing you need to know about Sino is that you are going to be doing pretty much all of your damage inside of your elemental burst. What your elemental burst actually is, is a stance change that will give Sino these sort of claw attacks, which will convert your attacks to electro damage. Throughout this phase, your Sino is going to be spamming normal attacks and your elemental skill, which we'll see shortly, for a good amount of electro damage while also getting a bonus 100 elemental mastery throughout its duration and some resistance to interruption. Now, while this ability has a cooldown of 20 seconds and a base duration of 10 seconds, it will usually last much longer. The reason for this is because your elemental skill will actually extend the duration of your burst every time you use it while you are inside of your burst. In fact, the way your skill works is you can either use it inside or outside of your burst. Outside is just a very simple dash forward that will give you a good amount of particles and deal okay damage. Damage. However, when you're outside of your burst, its cooldown will be very long, 7.5 seconds, but when you're inside of it, it will only be 3 seconds cooldown and will also have a greater effect that is central to your kit. In fact, when you're inside of your burst, you can spam your elemental skill, which will deal good damage and will still generate you some energy, but not as much as when you use it outside of your burst. With that said, what's really unique about Sino's kit and your elemental skill is your passive talent. What your passive talent does is throughout your burst, Sino will enter a end seer stance at certain intervals. This end seer stance is shown by putting a giant sort of eye on your screen, as you can see here, that gives you a short window to press your elemental skill for a bonus effect that will deal much more damage. Because of that, throughout your burst, when these end seers do appear, you want to make sure you're using your elemental skill at the correct times to maximize your damage, as this is going to be very important. You should get four end seers throughout your burst, where these eyes will appear on your screen, and then you press your skill, and you can see that there's going to be a visual indication that you actually got it in time, because it goes like orange. And what this does is increase the damage of your elemental skill by 35%, and then also fire three Dustwalker bolts that will each deal 100% of your Sino's attack as electro damage. Because of that, your skill is going to be very important to spam inside of your burst to not only increase its duration, but also greatly increase your damage. And you want to make sure the timing is correct. So saving your skill for the eye, using it at the appropriate times, is probably the most important part of your kit and something that's very important to master. While the exact amount of skills you can use and the exact rotation slash combos can vary, there's a few viable ones, and you can also run like the Thundering Fury artifact set, which can let you actually use your skill more often. The main thing you need to know right now is to at least use your skill every time the end here is up. So every time there's the eye on your screen and for exact combos, advanced details on how to get the most value and the most damage inside of your burst. I will explain that in great detail in the combo section of this video. So stay tuned for that. Moving on, your other passive talent will give you additional scalings based on your elemental mastery, which makes Sino a character who not only will want elemental mastery for the reactions he is triggering, like aggravate or hyper bloom, but also for some of his personal damage. In fact, your normal attack damage will be increased by 150% of your elemental mastery, and the Dust Doctor Bolts from the previous passive talent will also be increased by 250% of your EM. Because of that, elemental mastery becomes quite good on this character, and usually it is comparable to attack percent, but I obviously will go into more detail on how good elemental mastery is when we talk about how to build your artifacts. And lastly, before moving on from this section, I do want to say that leveling both your burst for the damage of your normal attacks inside of your burst, and also your elemental skill are going to be important, so don't neglect either of these talents, and definitely level both of them up. With that said, you can ignore your normal attacks as the scalings on these don't actually affect your damage inside of your burst as you gain a new combo string. Like your normal attacks are different inside of your burst than outside. You use claws instead of a spear, so you can ignore this talent. And right before moving on to how to build your Sino, I did want to say that having played him for a while now, I think Sino is one of the most fun DPSs I've ever played. I really enjoy his playstyle and did want to put that out there somewhere in this video. And regarding his power level, he's good enough to clear the abyss with ease, but he isn't quite like a meta defining character, so not a must pull, not someone you need. As 
as characters like Raiden, for example, or Kazuha can be more worth your Primo Gems. So those are my honest thoughts on Sino, a good DPS, but not a top tier one, although he is, in my opinion, incredibly fun. Now moving on, let's actually get into how to build your Sino efficiently, starting with his best artifact sets. The first thing I want to say is that Sino is a character who has many different artifact sets that can be viable and very strong for him. With that said, to maximize your Sino's DPS, here are going to be your best artifact sets. First of all, the 4th piece Thundering Fury can be the best one if you play him efficiently and build an optimal rotation around this specific artifact set. While I'll explain more of this in the combo section of the video, what's nice about the 4th piece Thundering Fury is that the 2 piece gives you 15% electro damage bonus and then the 4 piece will increase your damage as well based on the electro reactions that you do and for example in an aggravate team the damage bonus from aggravate is increased by 20% while also decreasing your elemental skill cooldown by 1 second every time you proc an electro reaction and this can occur every 0.8 seconds. Because of that this set lets you use more elemental skills in a rotation typically giving you 2 extra casts of your skill inside of your burst. So basically to not make this too complicated what this means is that Thundering Fury can be your best set assuming you're playing him efficiently and following a combo that I will show a bit later in the video. The reason for this is because you can get more elemental skills and as long as you're using your skill when there's that N seer or the eye on your screen then the damage you get from the set will be very high. Now other than just Thundering Fury though there are other sets that are pretty similar in DPS and that are more simple to use. Those sets include the 4 piece Gladiator, the 4 piece Thunder Soother, and the 4 piece Gilded Dreams. These three sets and Thundering Fury are going to be the go-to options for Sino and honestly all of them are really powerful depending on your team but also your substats. To go into more specifics though Thundering Fury will be the go-to if you have an optimal rotation around it. If not, it will be 4-piece Gladiator for the normal attack damage increase and the attack percent that you gain, making it a consistently powerful set and usually slightly out DPSing even the Gilded Dream set. With that said, 4-piece Gilded Dreams is also very good as it will give you a ton of elemental mastery on its effect, 80 from the 2-piece and then another 50 on the 4-piece for every party member of a different element and 14% attack for every party member of the same element, so Electro. Because of that, you'll typically gain around 180 elemental mastery and 14 attack percent from running the set, making it a good option. Because of the elemental mastery that you gain, it's usually the best for hyper bloom teams where you're spamming reactions non-stop. And for other teams, it's a really good option, very similar in strength to the other sets that I mentioned, without necessarily being the absolute best. Lastly, Thunder Soother is really good and can even outperform other sets that I mentioned, as long as the enemies are affected by Electro, although this uptime can be inconsistent in certain teams. But if you can maintain the Electro uptime, then 35% damage increase to opponents affected by Electro is going to be very good. Any of the four sets that I mentioned are going to be very good for Sino, with Thundering Fury being my go-to overall with an optimized rotation. If not, as I said, any of the other sets are very powerful. Do keep in mind you can also mix and match two pieces from the sets that I mentioned, notably Thundering Fury and an EM set like Gilded Dreams or Wanderers, which can also be a pretty decent option. Now moving on, let's actually get into what stats you want on your artifacts. For this section, we'll be covering the importance of elemental mastery versus attack, also how much energy recharge you need, and other stats you should go for. As always, with pretty much any DPS character, you should know that crit rate and crit damage is very important, so that's obviously something you're going to be looking for on every piece, as well as enough energy recharge to spam your burst on cooldown, since Sino is a character who pretty much only deals damage inside of his burst, or at least should only be dealing damage when he's inside of his burst. Because of that, let's start by addressing the energy recharge. How much energy recharge you need on Sino highly depends on the team you're running, but honestly, as long as you run another electro battery like Fischl, or even someone like Yai, Miko, or Beto who can generate some electro particles, you don't need that much energy recharge. In fact, if you have another electro character, you generally want somewhere from 120 to 140 energy recharge, but potentially needing either a bit more or a bit less, as again, this does vary. For example, if you're running Sino on the Thundering Fury artifact set where you can spam your skill with a support like Fischl that gets you a ton of particles and potentially even a support on a Favonius weapon, you can sometimes not even need energy recharge or need a very low amount like 110 or 120. If you're running Sino as a solo electro, you'll need a lot more energy. It can be somewhere around 180 energy recharge. So I do recommend usually running another electro character with Sino. Now with that said, for your sands and just substats in general, both elemental mastery and attack percent are very good, but which one is better? Well, first of all, Sino is a character who scales extra well with Elemental Mastery because of his passive talent that we saw earlier and because of the reaction damage that he's going to be doing. Because of that, Elemental Mastery is good, but it isn't necessarily better than Attack Percent. In fact, for your Sans, Attack Percent and Elemental Mastery are typically going to be similar in strength, with EM usually being a bit better. With that said though, this highly depends on not only your substats, but also your weapon, as some weapons will favor Elemental Mastery, whereas others can favor Attack Percent. In fact, if you're running a high base attack weapon, like for example Jade Spear, since your base attack is so high, you get more value from attack percent on your artifacts, so going for attack percent on your sands can be more favorable, whereas if you have a low base attack weapon, then elemental mastery can be better, especially for Sino's signature weapon for example, that gives you even more attack percent based on your elemental mastery, making it the go-to option. With that said though, attack percent and elemental mastery are generally very close in strength, so do consider the 
factors I just mentioned, like your substats and the base attack of your weapon, with elemental mastery being the sort of standard, but both are obviously very good. For your other main stats, you definitely want an electro damage bonus goblet and either crit rate or crit damage on your circlet, depending on which one you need more of. I did want to mention though that in a purely reaction based team where you are spamming hyper bloom, elemental mastery circlet can actually be viable, so I did want to mention that, although typically I do recommend going for crit, rate, or damage. Next up, let's get into Sino's best weapons as he's someone who has many good options for every type of player. Starting things off with your best installed option though, it's obviously going to be your signature weapon, the Staff of the Scarlet Sands. The reason for this is because though stats on this weapon are absolutely insane, especially for a character like Sino, who can use both elemental mastery and attack percent. In fact, what this weapon does is not only give you 44% crit rate on the stat, which is insane, but also convert some of your elemental mastery into attack, 52% of it at refinement rank 1, and then also giving you even more attack based on your elemental mastery whenever your skill hits an opponent, stacking up to 3 times and lasting 10 seconds. Because of that, this weapon just gives you an insane amount of stats, both with the crit and the attack percent you're gaining, especially if you already have elemental mastery on your artifacts, like with an EM Sands, this weapon will be absolutely insane and your best in slot overall. While this weapon is really good, there's a lot of other good options where you don't need this weapon, and Sino also has a surprisingly good free-to-play option. In fact, the next weapon I want to talk about is actually this free-to-play option, which is the White Tassel. The White Tassel at R5 will increase your normal attack damage by 48%, which will obviously affect the attacks inside of your burst, while also giving you 23% crit rate on its stat, making it very good for Sino. While the base attack is low, which is unfortunate, it makes up for it with this good effect and the good stat, and you can run an Elemental Mastery Sands on this weapon to not feel the low base attack as much. And so because of that, as you will see in the weapon ranking that I'll show on screen shortly, White Tassel is a very good option and only second to a few 5-star and 4-star options, making it your best free-to-play weapon overall and a really good option just in general. With that said, the options that can be a bit better are the deathmatch that you can get from the battle pass. Although this weapon is usually only slightly better, it is really good because of the crit rate and the attack percent that it gives you. Better options include 5-stars like Jade Spear and Staff of Homa, which are going to be your two best 5-stars other than your signature weapon in case you don't have it. Other than that, generic 5-stars like the Vortex Vanquisher or the Calamity Queller can be okay as well, but their strength is very similar to the White Tassel, so do keep that in mind. For more information, I'm going to put a weapon ranking on screen right now to help give you a general idea of where these weapons rank and which ones you should be running. Do keep in mind the exact ranking does vary based on, you know, substats, rotations, how much energy recharge you need, your sands and all that, but this is a good idea for a general ranking. I do want to once again mention that if you need energy recharge, the ER weapons can be higher in strength, but in general, Staff of Scarlet Sands is going to be the best option, White Tassel being an amazing free-to-play option, and then Jade Sphere, Homa, and Deathmatch also being very powerful depending on which ones you have and need. Alright, now moving on, let's talk about combos and advanced tips for Sino, and this is going to be a very important part to optimize your gameplay and make sure you can do the most damage in every rotation. Now, the way this works, I'm going to split it in two sections, a Thundering Fury Sino and a non-Thundering Fury Sino, because if you are running Thundering Fury, you can get two more casts of your skill in a rotation, and so your combo is naturally going to be different. Also, before we begin, a few things you should know. One thing is that you can dash cancel a lot of your attacks, and this can be important, for example, with dash canceling your fifth normal attack, the big spear chuck, if you want to do more before your next skill, and you can also animation cancel pretty much any normal attack into your skills cast to do it faster. Another thing to note is that your fourth hit is really good, since it does two hits pretty much instantly and you can cancel it, and the scaling on it is quite high. A similar thing can be said about your fifth hit, which has a high scaling, and you can dash cancel it quite rapidly, so maximizing those big hits while making sure you use your skill on every eye that appears on your screen, not missing one, is going to be your number one priority. And the last piece of general information that you need to know is that you can swap out early, you don't have to hit every single eye. What I mean by that is, you can stay on Sino for like 20 seconds and get four eyes inside of your burst. With that said, it's typically optimal, at least for my testing, to swap out after three, so you have time to set up your supports and then go back to Sino and use your burst again, as a lot of your cooldowns start to expire after like 12 to 15 or so seconds. And a last thing to mention is that if you are running Thundering Fury, you want to make sure you're actually procking the reactions as often as possible, so at least like applying Dendro to enemies, for example, to make sure you're actually getting more casts of your skill. With that said, let's go. First of all, for Thundering Fury, I'm going to go through a combo that I recorded. Uh, I'll put two on screen, just the text formats, in case that's all you care about, but I'll basically break down what I do. So I start by using my skill on Sino, then I use my burst and then do two normal attacks into a skill, and then do uh, four hits into a skill, then I can do another four hits into another skill press while the eye is still there. As you can see, it does last for quite some time, so hitting it at the end is pretty efficient, as I do get that fourth hit out. After this, you can do five normal attacks into a skill, as you can see right here. Do five normals, then the eye will appear, then use your skill, and then you spam and fours, so four normals into a skill, 
then another four normals into his skill as well, catching the eyes uh, as they appear. Now, after that, you could have swapped out instead of doing that last and five, as I do recommend swapping out after three eyes, not four, so that you can go to your support and refresh your abilities to get a proper rotation. But I just wanted to showcase what to do if you want to get every eye, which is that final and five at the end, so it is up to you. Next up, for a bread and butter and pretty easy combo for a non Thundering Fury Sino, so any other artifact set, you're basically going to want to spam your N5 as often as possible, and you can also weave in a two normal attack and two after your N5 if you dash cancel it and do it fast enough. The way this rotation works is, and I'm going to replay it, you do N3 E after your burst, so N3 here, then your E, then you do N5, and then you use your skill, and then after that, all you're going to be doing is N5, and then dash canceling it into an N2, and then using your skill. Hopefully that didn't sound complicated, but what it really is is just five normal attacks, you shoot your spear, then you want to dash cancel that, and you'll notice the eye will appear, uh, but you have time to do two normal attacks here, and then use your skill, and then just repeat that for the entirety of the rotation. Uh, as you can see, you can do that N5 into dash cancel, N2, and then use your skill. Here is typically when you would want to swap out, but if you want to do another, you can do the exact same thing again. Uh, obviously, the eye does appear when you're like doing your N5, so if you want to press E early, if you don't have time to dash cancel or whatever, you can, but you can also weave in those two extra normal attacks after pretty much every N5, as you can see from the rotation. So that is pretty much uh, a just easy standard combo that works. There's tons of other combos out there for both Thundering Fury and non-Thundering Fury. So do check the pinned comment for updates and also feel free to try out what works for you. But these are the combos that work very well through my testing. Now, moving on for Sino's constellations, I want to address how good they are, notably some important constellations like his second one that I know a lot of people are going to be going for. Do keep in mind before I begin that I'm keeping my Sino at C0. I'm just currently on the media server, which is why I have six, but I'm not actually actually getting a C6. Anyways though, your first constellation for Sino is going to increase your normal attack speed by 20% inside of your burst for pretty much the whole duration as you can refresh it by using your skill correctly. This is going to make you attack faster, allow you to do longer normal attack strings and change your combos, allowing you to do more normal attacks before every skill for just more total damage inside of your burst, which is pretty nice. Your second constellation though is going to be a bit more appealing, giving you 10% electro damage bonus for 4 seconds every time your normal attack hits opponents, stacking up to 5 times, effectively giving you 50% electro damage bonus after your first five normal attacks, which is going to be very good. Because of that, while I think Sino's a good unit even at C0, if you want to get an early constellation to stop at, C2 will be your stopping point as you'll gain attack speed from C1 and then a good amount of electro damage at C2, 50% for most of your rotation, which is a pretty significant amount. Next up, your third and fifth constellation increase your talent levels as always, and your C4 is a pretty unique one that will restore energy to your other party members other than Sino when you trigger reactions inside of your burst. Through this constellation, you can get up to 50 15 energy for each of your party members, which obviously won't increase your Sino's personal damage, but can increase your team's overall DPS by allowing you to run less energy on certain supports like, for example, Beto or Sing Chu, who might need a lot of energy otherwise, which can make this a decent constellation, but in my opinion, not your best one. And lastly, your sixth constellation is a pretty unique one that will effectively just give you more damage to your normal attacks when you're inside of your burst. The way this works is you stack up a passive when you use your burst and when you use your skill at the correct time inside of your burst when the eye appears on your screen allowing you to fire off a Dust Stalker Bolt with your normal attacks, giving you another instance of Electro Damage. These Dust Stalker Bolts are the same things that are going to basically deal damage when you do use your skill at the correct intervals when you are hitting those end seers or the eyes, which will deal 100% of Sino's attack as Electro Damage. Because of that, your C6 does seem pretty decent. Don't really know the exact strength of it yet, as it is too early to tell, but as I said, it does seem pretty good. Overall, Sino's a unit who I like even at C0, but if you do want to stop at an early level, you can get your second Constellation for Electro Damage Bonus, and some attack speed. Now with all that out of the way, let's finally talk about Sino's best teams, a very important section to maximizing, you know, your Sino's efficiency and to actually have a team who can support him very well. The main things you need to know about Sino's team building are first of all characters he has synergies with, notably like running him with another Electro character to allow him to run on much less energy recharge, and then also deciding what reactions you're going to be going for. And so I'm going to give you guys some good synergies for Sino and example teams and reactions that you can build your team around so that you can copy them and get the most value out of this character. First of of all, you typically want to be pairing Sino with another Electro unit. As I mentioned in the artifact section, doing this allows your Sino to run on much less energy recharge, which allows you to build more damage and be more efficient. For the Electro options you can run with Sino, first of all, there's Beto, whose burst lasts 15 seconds, which is quite a while, and will rapidly bounce between targets. Beto is an exceptional off-field carry, especially against multiple targets, as her burst will constantly bounce between them, and her burst does trigger on the normal attacks that your Sino does inside of his, so the synergy between these two characters is naturally very good. That being said, 
said, Beto also needs a lot of energy recharge and doesn't generate as much energy as another character like Fischl, but she makes up for it with high uptime and really good damage, especially AoE. Another good Electro Battery, a pretty go-to character is Fischl. Now, Fischl is one of the most broken characters in this patch. Insane amounts of damage from her Oz, her constellations, and especially her passive that deals damage when you proc reactions, as well as also being a good battery, generating a lot of Electro energy for your team. Because of that, Fischl is a good option. However, do keep in mind that her synergy with Sino isn't as good as with some other characters because her Oz only lasts for 10 seconds without constellations or 12 with your sixth one and Sino's burst lasts for much longer than that so there is some downtime but nonetheless since Fischl is so good you can still definitely use her with Sino. Other than Beto and Fischl though, Yai Miko can work as well as an off-field support and so can Electro healers like Kuki or Dory but I do prefer Kuki. Kuki is mainly going to be used if you need an Electro character and a healer as a two-in-one in one slot and there are quite a few teams that can be built around this especially for comfort if you just want a healer although many of the teams that I will be showing you will run a more offensive Electro support option like Beto or Fischl because they're quite frankly pretty broken. Now I know I talked fast but basically that's just to show you guys the Electro battery you can run with Sino. There's a lot of good options that you can choose and then after that your team becomes pretty flexible. While you can run Sino without another Electro character I typically don't recommend it as you would need way more energy recharge. Now for the rest of your team what are you going for? Well one team comp that works very well is an Aggravate Sino team. Aggravate Sino teams are pretty simple. You run him with an Electro character and then an off-field Dendro support. Now while I do think there's going to be much better ones in the future like potentially Nahida. Right now the main character is the best option but Kole can be okay too. That leaves you with just one flex option. Kazuo being a really good offensive option, offensive support and the same can be said with Sucrose as always but Kazuo is much better at grouping, dealing good damage and giving you that electro damage bonus from his passive talents and also the Verdescent Venera set. If you want a more defensive option you can consider running someone like Zhongli for a shield or an Anemo healer like Jean or even swapping your electro character with Kuki as I mentioned earlier. I did want to quickly take the time to add though that I believe Zhongli is especially good with Sino for a few reasons, oh, notably because his uptime is pretty long, like his shield lasts for a long time, 20 seconds, which is the entire duration of your Sino's burst, making that resistance shred have good uptime. When you compare this with the Verdes and Venera set and some other supports like abilities that have a much lower uptime, Zhongli becomes a good consistent option that can last for your entire rotation. Zhongli's high uptime has really good synergy with Sino as your shield is going to last the entire time, protect you and prevent you from getting interrupted while also providing you with 20% resistance shred to any element you're fighting, notably Electro and whatever else you're using, which is very powerful. On top of that, you can run supportive artifact sets like either Petra or Tenacity of the Millilith, which can be very powerful in a Sino team. Because of that, I do like Zhongli as a defensive option for your last slot, replacing the need for a healer. Anyways, to stay on topic though, aggravate teams are very good for Sino, with the last option being very flexible. You can also run Electro Charge teams if you don't want to run Dendro, where you run Sino, Electro Support, Hydro Support, Anemo Support typically, with Beto Sing Chu Kazo being the best options. For some other Dendro teams, you can run Hyper Bloom with Sino, pairing him with Beto Sing Chu once again, but with a Dendro support, or even double Hydro for some really high single target damage. If you want to proc Quick Bloom, which is Quicken and Hyper Bloom at the same time, you can run a slow Hydro Plier like Barbara with a Dendro and Electro support on your team as well. And there's also some Sino Overload teams you can run uh, like this, or you could even do Sai National, which is Sino uh, in a Shangling team, although you can obviously do this with other characters like Raiden, and it would be better. You can also obviously run Mono Electro with many different variations or even a Sino hyper carry team. Although in a team like this, I typically would prefer just running Aggravate to increase your electro damage. Because of that, there's quite a bit of flexibility to Sino's teams. As you can see, I typically recommend running him with an electro battery and then you can choose a reaction to build upon. You can go electro charge if you don't want to run Dendro in a team like this, or you can go Aggravate, which is my personal favorite for Sino. Similarly to an Aggravate Kaching, which is pretty broken right now, you can do the same with Sino. With that said, we're now going to get into the DPS showcase of my Sino. We're going to be using this team right here, which is the Aggravate Sino team with Zhongli as a support and especially for this abyss because we're going to be doing second half having a defensive option is really helpful and very useful and Zhongli replaces the need for a healer. Throughout the video I showed clips of Sino with Beto, very good synergy but now we're going to do this team as I said. My Sino is C0 with an R1 weapon, his signature weapon, on level 8 talents, a level 90 character, 4 piece thundering fury and really good artifacts. With that said I hope the guide was helpful and I hope you'll enjoy the showcase. Let's go.
So yeah, that's about it. Sign is a character who I absolutely love and will probably be maining alongside Shao for a long time. And I really hope I did a good job at giving you everything you need to know in one video. Do keep in mind, since he is a pretty complex character, a lot of work went in this video. Like I don't normally ask for likes and stuff, but if you did like it, be sure to leave a like and sub if you want, because this video took an ungodly amount of time and my editing software was being dumb. And mainly just because I wanted to make sure the information was accurate. As always with new characters, if there's anything new I want to add, it will be in a pinned comment, especially regarding like teams and combos as that can evolve with time. With that said, I hope this this guy was helpful, and as always, I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.